The church draws her life from the Eucharist. It is the constant fulfillment of the Lord's promise to remain with us until the very end of time. Those were the, are the first words of St. John Paul II in one of his major pastoral letters on the Blessed Sacrament. The church draws her life from the Eucharist. Let that sink in. And it is the perfect reflection for us to make today as we begin reading from the Gospel of John. As I mentioned at the beginning of Mass today, we're taking a break from reading from Mark's Gospel. For the next five weeks, we will hear from the Gospel of John. Specifically, we'll be reading from the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John. It is where we get our theology on the Eucharist. It's filled with the most profound teaching on the Holy Eucharist. The other Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, each present the Eucharist during the account of the Last Supper when Jesus instituted this great sacrament on the night before his crucifixion. John does things a little differently. He presents the Eucharist here in chapter 6, beginning with Jesus' multiplication of the loaves and what has, has been called the bread of life discourse, from which we'll be reading from for the next five weeks. Well, pray for me because... It's not easy to preach on the same topic for five weeks, but we will do our best. But I want you to do your part as well, and I'm going to give you homework. I don't often give you homework, but I'm giving you homework. I want you to read John chapter 6. Do it this week or the next, because I want you to have a clear idea of what we're talking about at Mass for the next five weeks and how truly radical this teaching was for the time. What a gift the Holy Eucharist is for all of us. And indeed, we'll be using this chapter to remind ourselves exactly what we believe. What do we believe as Catholics? What do we believe about the Eucharist? And how is it that it is the central importance of our Catholic faith? To help us set the stage of this central teaching, I want to tell you a story about the great St. John Bosco. For about 60 years, St. John Bosco received remarkable dreams or visions. One of these visions he shares, and it's probably one of the best remembered, it's probably one of the ones that he spoke about the most. And it's a dream, a vision of the church in the form of a very large vessel, a very large ship, a ship that's sailing on the sea. As, the ship, as this ship of the church sailed through the waters, St. John Bosco saw many other smaller ships converging on it, doing battle against the ship, which he understood to be the many enemies of the church and how the church was persecuted and how she suffered from sin and error. On the horizon, protruding from the sea were these two enormous columns, and they were set off in the distance. On top of one of the columns was the statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and there was an inscription on the bottom of that column which said, the help of Christians, the help of Christians, on the top of the other column was the sacred host, the most holy Eucharist with the inscription that said, salvation of the faithful. The captain of the ship was the Pope and he was doing everything he could to steer the ship between these two columns. All the enemies moved to attack and at times St. John Bosco saw great holes that would appear on the side of the big ship as the church was wounded by her enemies, by persecution and by sin. But when she was wounded, a gentle breeze would come, would blow and they would blow from the twin pillars and the holes would be repaired. 
But the battle progressed, the Pope overcame all obstacles, and the enemies were finally guided, and, and we were, the Pope was able to overcome the obstacles and enemies, and finally was able to guide this big ship right between those two columns and fasten onto them. Once firmly ensconced between them, a great wind blew and all of the church enemies were scattered and broken to pieces and these smaller ships all sank to the bottom of the sea. The church was safe. She was guarded by the Blessed Mother, the help of Christians on one side, and the Holy Eucharist, the salvation of the faithful on the other side. So the meaning behind the dream, this vision, was clear. That as long as we remain close to the Blessed Sacrament, the Blessed Mother, to Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we the church are safe, safe from our enemies, safe from error and sin. What a great lesson that alone teaches us. I always look forward to speaking and teaching and preaching about the Blessed Mother. I have a huge devotion to the Blessed Mother. And I myself am spurred on to deeper devotion, hopefully. But for the next five weeks, if I've been mentioning, we will follow the readings of John chapter 6 and focus on the other pillar, the Holy Eucharist, the salvation of the faithful, the most priceless treasure and the most precious possession that we as Christians have. When people ask me about various devotions or about things they can do to strengthen or deepen their spirituality or deepen their faith, I typically like to mention several things. And two of them have to do with the Eucharist. One is daily mass. I encourage people, if you want to deepen your faith, you want a, a closer relationship with the Lord, daily mass is a good way to do that. And the second thing is going to adoration in the Blessed Sacrament. Fortunately, we have both here at St. Augustine's. We have mass every day at 8 a.m. and at 12.05. And I'm always happy to recommend it as a perfect way to begin your day or to come right before lunch. Consider taking 25, 30 minutes to come to daily Mass, once or twice a week or every day. Also, as you know, the Adoration Chapel is open for prayer for Eucharistic Adoration, and I'm so gratified to see the people come in and pray at the chapel throughout the day. Some come for an hour, some come for a half an hour, some even for five or ten minutes, but that's exactly what it's for. I'm happy to recommend that as well. These two devotions, daily mass and adoration before the Blessed Sacrament. I consider both of those devotions to be life-changing. It's like trying your it's like tying your ship to the pillar. The church draws her life from the Eucharist. It is the constant fulfillment of the Lord's promise to remain with us until the end of time. Once again, that quote from St. John Paul II reminds us of the centrality of the Eucharist to our Catholic faith. The, opening, uh, the last week was the closing Mass for the Eucharistic revival. I, if you haven't had a chance to see some of the talks or the music or the adoration, I would recommend that you do that. They were excellent. You could look it up on their website or you can find it on YouTube. It was incredible to see 50,000 Catholics from all over the United States to gather in adoration of our Lord. In contrast, contrast that to this past Friday night, the opening ceremony for the Olympics, a gross, disgusting mockery of the Last Supper the very center of our faith. It is at the Last Supper that Jesus instituted the Eucharist. Make no mistake about it. Our Christian faith is under attack in this country and around the world, and it was on full display at the Olympics on Friday night. We need to be closer to the Lord. We need to draw our strength from the Eucharist. 
For the next five weeks, we'll be hearing from John's chapter 6 and refresh our understanding about the Eucharist and what it means to us as Catholics. I pray these weeks will stir up in all of us an increased faith and devotion to Christ and to the Blessed Sacrament, which is God's greatest gift to all of us. Amen.